Good morning, and welcome to worship today at Abiding Presence Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Miles Hopgood, and it is a delight to be with you today as we gather to celebrate the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Today we hear of Jesus' first healing miracle and consider what it means to be exhausted by the work we do and sustained by the care of God. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship today, and then as you are able, please rise in body or spirit for the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue worship by singing our gathering hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted Scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name because he is great in strength mighty in power, not one is missing. 
Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our psalm for today is from Psalm number 147 which we will read responsively by the whole verse. Alleluia, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who wait, await God's steadfast love. Alleluia. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, chapter nine, verses 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. <laughs> to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. 
And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, if there are any younger people here, I would invite you to scooch a little bit further in your seats, sit up straight, because this message is especially for you. In our gospel reading today, we heard about the first time Jesus healed someone in his ministry and how big of a deal it was. He went to visit the house of one of his disciples and their mother-in-law was sick. And when he healed her, world, word spread and soon the entire town was there, all wanting Jesus to heal them. Jesus healed so many people that day and he was exhausted. I bet you've had days like that too. Not days where you've healed tons and tons of people, maybe some of you, but days that seem to have gone on forever. When you finished and were so tired, you couldn't imagine what the next day was going to look like. It's comforting to know that Jesus went through days just like that. And comforting too to know that when he was tired, he needed to rest just like you and me. This moment from Jesus' ministry is a wonderful reminder that all the things you and I go through and experience, our tiredness, our frustrations, our limitations, Jesus felt those too. He was human just the way that you and I are. And that God would come down and be human with us just the way that we are, this is wonderful news. It means that whatever you're going through, whatever you're feeling today, whether you are happy or sad, energetic or exhausted, or somewhere in between all of these things, God knows what it's like and came to feel all those things too, to be closer to us, to save us, and to make a place with God forever. So I hope that you, as you go out into your day today and into the week that's ahead of you, whatever comes, whatever frustrates or exhausts you, whatever fills you with joy or life, know that God is right there with you in all of that. Just like the prophet Isaiah said, sustaining you when you are weary and lifting you up on wings of eagles. I hope that that promise goes with you every day this week and that you feel how true it is in the way that God is with you every day. Thanks so much for joining me up here today. It was wonderful to spend some time with you. You can metaphorically go back to your seats and I'll see you for the rest of the service. Bye. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel reading today is the first healing that comes in Jesus' ministry. It is, coincidentally, the first time Jesus learns the meaning of the phrase, if you give someone an inch, they will take a mile. He and his newly minted disciples have just come from the synagogue, where he had been teaching and they had been worshiping God together. After this, they retire to the house of Simon and Andrew, presumably to rest on this Sabbath day. Upon arriving, however, they learn that the mother-in-law of Simon has fallen ill with a fever. And so Jesus, the consummate house guest, heals her and restores her to her place in the community. 
No sooner has he done this, though, that word spreads, and soon, as Mark puts it, the entire town is at his doorstep, begging for healing, for demons to be cast out, for these wonders to be performed in their life also. Jesus heals many who have come well through into the night, and early in the morning before the dawn comes, he absconds to find some peace, a moment of rest for himself. There, off in a time of prayer, the disciples find him out. Others are looking for him, they say. Whether or not Jesus is tired, there is more work to be done. I imagine that each of us can relate to how Jesus must have been feeling in that moment. Exhausted by the world and the work that beats in on us, looking for a moment's breath, feeling as if we cannot escape all the weariness around us, the needs that others bring to us, the needs that we see on our doorstep and in our world each day. Whether those needs that surround us are small household things or larger than life problems, we have all known our taste of fatigue, of exhaustion, and of weariness with the work of the world. It is comforting, perhaps, to know that Jesus experienced this as well, that even he who is called to be the great physician who healed many as a sign of his reign to come, had his breaking points in this life also. That the humanity that he took on when he was born of human flesh had with it also our weariness, our exhaustion, our limits with the world around us. That Christ struggled with these too is comfort to me as I imagine it is to you also. Comfort as it is, though, to find solidarity in Jesus, what does God say to this weariness, this fatigue that so frequently besets us in this human life? Beyond solidarity, where can we today who are weary find consolation? Not merely to see God with us in this time, but to find the promise that such fatigue can be endured, that we will be sustained. We look to the words of Isaiah today, and they are curious ones. As we hear at the end of that passage this beautiful promise of being borne up on eagles' wings, we find words directed at the weary that even the young and the strong, says Isaiah, will find themselves out of breath and faint. But God does not tire, will lift us up. These words of Isaiah are directed at the weary, and yet they start in the most odd place, with almost a lambasting of us. Have you not seen, have you not heard, Isaiah begins, pointing us to God's creating work. If you are like me, you are wondering what in the world does God's creating work, God being the author of all creation, say to my personal, my here and now exhaustion and weariness? How in the world are we to find consolation for the exhaustion of our lives in the knowledge that God is, as we confess, the maker of all things seen and unseen? Here, one commenter remarks, Kristen Winland, I know you all know her, and her commentary on this passage from Isaiah. She reminds us that this is not what God's creating work is, at least not all of it, that God was, at the beginning, author of all things. That God's creating work is not only in that moment a once-and-done thing. God, the creator, is also God the sustainer. We see that here in Isaiah as he moves us from that creating work at the beginning of creation to all the ways that God sustains us here and now, likening the stretching of the firmament over the world to the building of the roof of a house, to the constructing 
of societies, of governances, of ways of sustaining our world to God's own sustaining care for us each and every day. God's work as creator is also God's work as sustainer, Isaiah reminds us. The two are inseparable. And so in that way, creation does not stop on the seventh day when God rests. No, it continues through all of history, as in every moment God works to sustain our world and our lives here and now in whatever shape they take. These words reminded me of a sermon from one of my favorite medieval preachers, Honorius Augustinensis of Regensburg, What a Mouthful. It was a sermon he gave for the Feast of Pentecost when he pointed out that how both the Son and the Holy Spirit are active in creation. Through the Son, he writes and preaches, God brought all things into being. Yet through the Spirit, he continues, he sustains their every movement and breath. Through the Son, all the heavenly bodies were brought into being, all the stars and planets and moons. And yet through the Spirit, he continues, they are given their orbits and flows. Through the sun, all the rivers of the world were sprung up and brought into their place. Yet through the Spirit, they keep their banks, their regular flows, the cycles which sustain our world. Honorius walks through all the moments of creation, tying that creating work through the sun to God's sustaining work through the Spirit helping the hearer hear at every moment this promise of Isaiah, how all creation each day is being borne up by the Spirit of God as on wings of an eagle, carried, lifted, brought into its proper place and time. All the intricacies of our ecosystems and our flowing worlds knit together in a way that allows life to flourish. In those movements of the Spirit all around us, we find ourselves in our own ebbs and flows. The rhythms of energy in the morning, should we have it, and exhaustion at the end of the day when it comes. Finding our own pattern of life there. In this way, we see the solidarity of Jesus in his work and tireless care for others, in his need for rest and care for himself. We find that, in that also, the permission and work of the Spirit to find our own ebbs and flows, of the calling to work tirelessly for one another, and to find in our work the grace of God to rest also and care for ourselves. For we, you and I, are not called to tireless exhaustion, what it means to follow Christ in this life is not to follow and do what only he could have done for us, to lay down his life in this way for the whole world and every one of us. Only Christ is called to such a death, and we are not called to be his followers in a way that means working ourselves to the bone, as if somehow our labors must complete what Christ has already finished on the cross. We are called to endure, to strive, to think first of others, yes, this is true, but to also see ourselves in need of care and rest as well, to find in life a rhythm in which we can endure and be sustained by God's spirit, having our own springtimes and summers and harvests and winters, time, as the author of Ecclesiastes says, to work, and time to sleep. A time for this and a time for that. Our life too is called to have these rhythms. All of this, of course, has been disrupted for us these past 11 months. Even if it was well adjusted before this pandemic, this season of communal suffering and separation has torn apart even the most balanced rhythms in our lives. Some of us are trapped indoors, 
unable to work in the ways we are used to, separated from our jobs, no longer able to work in the ways that we were previously called. Others, however, are being worked into the ground by this time, going beyond whatever was imagined before, working themselves, putting themselves at risk for the care of others. We are, in so many ways at this moment, a people out of balance, who have been torn out of the rhythms of a well-ordered world, if we ever knew them to begin with. Here, again, we find ourselves drawn back to the solidarity that we find in Christ today. A Christ who embraced those who beat down his door even when it was an entire town. Who sought out solitude and silence and the work that we find there in being alone with God and ourselves. In this time of disruption, wherever you find yourself, whatever that out-of-balance rhythm looks like in your world today, know that God's spirit and love for you are not only present in your life when things are well-ordered, when you are out of balance, when things around you have gone akimbo, whether you are restless and trapped or overworked and beaten down, Know that the Spirit is there with you also, all the more, lifting you up in your exhaustion, bringing you peace in your restlessness. There to remind you that there is not one season of your life that only there can you find God. But ours is a God for all times and seasons, for all places and troubles, for all joys and concerns. For all of us, Christ endured these things and endures them now with you. May you be sustained by God in all these seasons, knowing always that the promise of God here for you is this, that there will be a final season of all our lives when the world is restored aright, when we know peace together as one human race with all creation, and with the one who created, sustained, and brought us to that world. This is the promised reign of God, and we will know one another there in a way more fully than we can imagine. May that promise lift you up today and always, fixed in your heart by the one who made it yours, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship today by rising in body or spirit to sing our hymn of the day.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. The response this morning is, have mercy, O God. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, for all pastors and deacons, for our bishops Elizabeth and Tracy, and for our mission partner St. Bartholomew's, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials and CEOs, for international health organizations that in times of trial, fear or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, especially Bertha, Janet, Jean, Barbara, Hanalor, Amanda, B, Edna, Trish, Mia, Nancy, Martha, Matt, Wanda, Jean, Danuta, Edward, David, Wayne, Jack, Steve, Jill, Bobby, Bill, Mark, Debbie, Selena, and Tim, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For this congregation, for outreach and social ministries centered here, especially food collection efforts in support of food pantries at Redeemer and St. Bart's Lutheran Churches, for parish nurses and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this place who open us to new understandings, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that their lives serve as witness to the goodness of God. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another, either in the chat box, the comment section, or simply through the Spirit. Let us take a moment to prepare our offering this morning.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, it has been a delight to worship with you today, and I hope that whenever or wherever you are joining us, you feel sustained by God's presence with you this day. I have just a few announcements for the good of our lives together. The first is that next Sunday is the celebration of the Transfiguration, which means that we are in the last stretch before the season of Lent. Next Sunday, we're going to be doing something a little bit special, which is in fact a joint worship service with the Trenton Area Mission Partnership. This is a partnership between St. Bartholomew's, Redeemer Lutheran, Prince of Peace, and Abiding Presence for a larger witness and ministry in the greater Trenton area. These congregations will be coming together to put together a worship that is joint between all four of them, but you'll still be able to access it exactly where you are right now, on our YouTube page. We hope that you join in with the celebration from all of these congregations as we come together to rejoice in what God is doing in our wider area. Following worship next Sunday, we will begin Lent on Wednesday, February 17th, with a celebration of Ash Wednesday. This is the day that we begin this season of 40 days before Easter, with a time of prayer and repentance being called back to our lives together with God. This will be a service done virtually, which means that we will not be doing the imposition of ashes this year, as it has been advised against by our bishop and other health authorities as not appropriate in this pandemic season. Still, it will be a good time to come together and to remember that this is a journey for this season as well. Ashes are no, we are a people together in preparation for the joy of Easter morning. Outside of these worship opportunities, our lives together at Abiding Presence are continuing full steam. Education for pre-K through sixth grade is being held on, by Zoom on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m., followed by evening prayer online at 7.30 p.m. Thursdays, beginning on February 18th, so this is the first Thursday in Lent, adult education will resume on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Keep an eye on Share and Prayer for a link to that gathering and for information about what we will be studying next. If there are any other announcements, I don't know about them, so please put them in the chat box in the comments section. And if you want me to say them on, uh, in worship, just make sure to get them to the office by Wednesday so that I know to include them when I record. Now, as you are able, please rise in body or spirit to receive this blessing which comes from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We continue by singing our sending hymn. See you. 
is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, comfort the afflicted, honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.